Well, today is the clash of two titans, two big SUVs. One that's big in size, quite literally, I'm talking about the Mercedes-Benz GLS that has recently had a facelift. And it goes up against the new Audi Q7, which is big on appeal and a very popular choice in India. We're going to put them head to head and find out which one comes out ahead. If you're buying a king-size SUV, then size is what it's all about. And this is where the GLS scores big time. At over 5 meters long and 1.8 meters tall, the GLS wins the big boy battle hands down. Not a lot has changed in its styling from when it was the GL. Save a softened front end, full LED tail lamps and a reprofiled bumper. It's still the upright, old-school looking SUV it always was. The large three-pointed star sits proudly atop the twin-slatted grille as if to say, this is who I am. The Q7 in comparison is modern, edgy and stylish. It's a simple, clean design, but it's still pleasing to the eye. Tight skinning and estate-like rear windscreen make it look smaller than its actual size. And it's lost the look of a huge SUV. Still, there is an amazing amount of detailing right down to the LED tail lights that flow in the direction of the turn that make the Q7 a big draw. The interior of the Q7 is impressive, there's no two ways about it, whether we talk about fit, finish and build quality or we talk about the materials. I mean, there's this beautiful wood, nice matte finish chrome. I love the way the AC vent runs entirely across the dash. It's a very modern looking interior and that's what's great about it. It looks very current, especially that virtual cockpit that brings up even the navigation displays so beautifully. Of course, you have the scribble pad. I mean, it's got everything that one could want and more. Attention to detail is also at another level. Things like how the door pockets light up if you so much as put your hand in them or how the surface of the small climate control buttons are actually touch sensitive make this cabin feel so special. In addition, the front seats are comfy, the infotainment system is easy to use and visibility is really good. All of which add up to make the Q7 an absolute pleasure to spend time in. The GLS cabin is updated too and gets a new and rather large 8-inch center screen, a reworked center console and even a rotary selector called Dynamic Select to switch between the five driving modes on offer. There is also the latest version of Merck's command infotainment system on board which includes Apple CarPlay and also gives you the option to browse the internet when stationary or hear internet radio channels through a paired phone's 3G or 4G network. However, the interface isn't as nice as the Audi's and feeding inputs via the click and rotary controller isn't perfectly intuitive at times. The system is also slow to respond to commands. There are just too many buttons on the center console and it feels cluttered in comparison. The GLS's overall quality is really good and can't be faulted, but in this comparison it feels like an older mobile phone with a keypad, whereas the Q7 comes across as the modern smartphone. This is really the way the overall cabins feel too. What's good about these large SUVs and a reason to buy them is their extra row of seating. Well, a genuine seven-seater, the GLS, so let's get into the third row. There's a manual full for the seat, which is a bit heavy to pull up. And getting in is a little fidgety. But I have to say that once you're here, what's really impressive is the space for a third row. There's quite a lot of leg room. Now, I'm short, so obviously, you know, for the smaller people, we'll have to get back here. But even if there's two of us, I would say it's not bad for a long journey. The recline angle is good. The seat itself is comfortable. So, yes, as a third row, it definitely gets a thumbs up. The Q7, on the other hand, isn't quite so accommodating. Now, though, though the Q7 is technically a seven-seater, there is a slight problem because Either you carry the seven seats or you carry the spare wheel. As you can see, the wheel takes up pretty much all the space in the boot and you can only put one seat up. And even when you sit here, you're low, you're cramped. And I definitely wouldn't want to be stuck here on a long journey. That spare wheel has an impact on the boot space as well and the GLS scores much better here too with the larger, uncluttered boot area that can swallow a couple of suitcases easily. Both the Mercedes and the Audi feature 3.0-litre V6 turbo diesel engines. The Merck's 258HP and 620NM is better than the Audi's 249HP and 600NM. 
But then again, the Q7 is a whole 200 kg lighter. And that translates to a significant difference in real-world performance. Where the GLS is brisk for a large diesel 7-seat SUV, the Q7 is shockingly fast. The Audi races from 0 to 100 in just 6.95 seconds or a full 1.26 seconds faster than the Merc. Stomp on the throttle and you'll also find Q7's engine is just so smooth and refined, it's like a knife cutting through butter. I mean, you can't tell that this is a diesel you could happily mistake it for a petrol. It's a nice linear acceleration, yet when you want to get a quick move on and you flatten your foot, a healthy dose of torque is served up and it propels you forward. You know, it's a really wide power range, which is what makes this car so effortless to drive in almost any condition. If the GLS were not in a comparison, you would find its performance just okay. But when pitted against the Q7, you start picking faults. The power doesn't come in a smooth flow and it's bunched up around the 2000 RPM mark. Also, the new 9-speed gearbox is not as seamless as the Q7's 8-speed. As a result, the GLS just doesn't feel as effortless as the Q7 and it's best when you drive it in a relaxed, easy manner. The same goes for the way it is dynamically too. I feel dwarfed in the GLS in comparison to the Q7. This feels much more massive. It actually feels like you're the king of the road, or the queen in my case. But the bulk is felt when you go around the corners and you do realize you're hauling over two tons. So it's best to dial it a few notches back and do it at a leisurely pace. Especially considering that stopping isn't too easy either. Now the brakes take a while to bite and you do feel the weight of this car when you're trying to brake in a hurry, so it's best to plan in advance. The Q7 on the other hand is like the eager kid ready for anything you ask of it. It changes directions deftly and feels much lighter than it is. Now this feels very car-like to drive, it doesn't feel like a massive SUV, it feels easy enough to manoeuvre in traffic conditions and even on narrower roads like this. The steering is light and easy when you want to manoeuvre it through traffic and city conditions and yet round the corners and when you're going quicker, it weighs up really well. It's not the best steering but it still offers up enough to give you good measures of confidence whether you're around the corners or at high speeds in a straight line. Both cars also come with all-wheel drive, dedicated off-road modes, hill descent control, hill hold assist and suspensions that can be raised to enhance ground clearance. So you can do your fair share of off-roading when necessary. But I think most owners would really spend their time being chauffeured around in the lap of luxury of the middle row of these SUVs. Now to get into the GLS, you have to really use the step board to haul yourself in considering its towering height. But once inside, you sit in a commanding height and the well-cushioned middle row really feels like a seat of power. There's massive leg space despite the fact that these seats don't slide back like they do on the Q7. The Q7 really pampers its passengers. It's a nice spacious back seat, loads of leg room. Third passenger will be comfortable as well here. You sit quite nice and high, so you get a nice view outside the window. Panoramic roof opens it up nicely. Spending long hours here will be really easy and if you want to get even more comfortable, you can always recline the backrest. But it's not only space that counts when you're a passenger, it's also how comfortable the ride is. And this is where the Q7 has a distinct advantage. Now the ride quality at low speed, it's exceptional. It just damps everything, doesn't let the bumps and potholes filter through. As you pick up the pace, yes, there is a fair bit of movement but it's still far more tethered down than the GLS. 
the GLS does feel top heavy and there is a fair bit of roll as well. So no matter how much you play with the suspension settings, it's still never perfectly settled. And it also gets caught out through the occasional deeper pothole too. So if it's right comfort you're after, it's the Q7 that scores better. Well, the verdict's pretty clear if you're looking for a true seven-seater with lots of luggage carrying capacity and something that has road presence and feels like a traditional SUV, well, look no further than the GLS. But fact of the matter is, apart from that road presence, the luggage carrying capacity and that third row of seats, the Q7 outclasses the GLS on most counts, whether we talk about performance, whether we talk about refinement, whether we talk about comfort. And of course, there's those modern, quality interiors that you have on the Q7 that really make it feel premium and luxury. Fact of the matter is that this really feels like a new car whereas that feels like a facelift. There's no doubt about it, the Q7 is our winner.